Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be taking this image that I found on a public domain image site and cleaning it up and converting it into this image over here, kind of a little wedding photo image. This trick can be used for anything where you have a whole series of images. We'll be changing the pictures as you can see, fixing the canister, adding in a little drop shadow, and also changing the background as well. Now if you enjoy this video project, make sure that you click the like button and share the video. Also subscribe to my channel if you want to always stay up to date with my new videos. You can get my complete training if you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements either on my website or on Amazon. Okay, let's get to it. Putting pictures into a film strip like this using Photoshop Elements is fairly straightforward, but there are a few little tricks we'll be tossing in here to make this just a bit more interesting. I'm going to close this one down and we'll start off with this original image right here. Now I have a link for this on my video support page. You'll find a link for that, of course, in the description. The first thing I want to do is to start by fixing the canister over here, the film canister on the right hand side. We'll work right hand side to left as we go through this whole thing. We'll also be using five pictures, one for here, there, here, here, and over here. You bring those up. So I have this series of five pictures. There are all wedding shots from the same wedding actually. So we'll be using those to fill in these spots. Okay, starting off with the right hand side. Let's just zoom in over here. Get a nice shot of that canister. There we go. And I'll be using the zoom control down here to be a little bit more specific on my zoom. I want to get as much of the area that I need to work with filling my screen as possible. It just makes it easier that way. There we go. So there's that whole section. I want to work with that section right in there. Now before I do anything else, I always take my background and copy this up here to a new layer. Now we'll be changing this layer as well from the background to a regular layer. We'll save that for a little later on in the video when we're changing the background in. Okay, so here's our background copy. I'll just hide this for right now. Background copy. Let's put a new layer above this. This is the same basic trick for every single one of these sections. We'll be doing a new layer. So let's go up here to layer this time new fill layer and solid color. Don't check anything in there, just go ahead and choose OK. And it gives you a solid color just like that. Now, let's change the color in here to kind of a nice yellowy orange up here. Now the one that I actually used, I'll just type this in down here at the hexadecimal number section. The one I actually used was FFDE00, right there. So FFDE00, it's got a nice bright orange. Now I need to have this fit inside of that canister section. So let's hide this. There we go. So the yellow there is hidden. Go over to the polygonal lasso tool and I'll make a selection right around this section right here. I'll start over here, this bottom right hand corner. Now for the curve down here, do this in just little short steps, just like that. It's a fairly shallow curve, so it's you can do fairly big steps on this one. And then let's just work along this edge. Now the edge is not an exact perfectly straight line, so I'll just do it in smaller steps here just to make sure. And then let's get this little notched out bit right up here. Same thing across the top. And this side should be more of a straight line. Come back to our starting point. That makes a selection right around that spot. Okay, now let's reshow this layer. Since we have our selection, I can click on the layer mask button on this. Let me just change back over here to the move tool. Now the easy way to do this is to click on the new layer mask button and that's what we'll be doing for all of those photos. But notice here that this is not selectable. The reason for that is when you put in a layer here, a, a color layer, it automatically gives you a layer mask. So let's get rid of this first layer mask and we'll then have that button available. So if you're over here on this layer, 
with that light blue outline. Click over here on the right hand side, look for that light blue outline right there. Right click and delete layer mask. There we go. Now the button's available right here, add layer mask button, click on that, gives us a new layer mask, which then puts that yellow color right inside of that section. Now notice we've lost all of our reflections, we lost our shadowing in here, so we need to blend this into the layer underneath. So I do, do a little blend on this to make that work out. So we'll do that simply enough here by changing our blend mode right here down to color. So that just adds this color on top of that. Now notice when I did that, we lost a lot of the brightness on the color as well. So you we need to bring back our brightness in here. We can do that easily by just making a copy of this layer. There we go. And then changing the blend mode for the top copy down to multiply. And there it is. That just kind of multiplies that together because it's that kind of a nice yellowy orange look that we have on the Kodak film cans that used to be pretty popular. So there you go. There's the first step. Okay, now let's move over here to our next section. And that's this bit right here. And the original picture, they left us as a gray. I think we'll put a color in here, but I want to keep some of these reflections on this one layer. So we'll be using a blend mode here as well. Let's just adjust our zoom. Bring the zoom in as much as we can to so get a nice large area to work with. That looks pretty good right there. There we go. Back to the move tool. Let's now bring in our photograph, our first photograph to put into this position. Lots of ways of bringing in pictures. You can go up here to open and go to the folder for that. You can do a place, navigate to the folder and place your image in here. I'm going to do something different this time. I'm just going to bring up my folder. There we are. Let's just kind of squeeze this down so you can see everything. And in here, I'm just going to take the picture right here and drag it over into Photoshop Elements. Notice how it actually opens it up just like that. You can just drag and drop right from a drive folder right into Photoshop Elements. Okay, there's our picture. Let's now take that background layer, drag it over here. It's going to be much too big as you can see there. I'll close that down. No problem. Let's just pull this over, get to the upper left hand corner there. You see the little control handle right there. And let's take the upper left hand corner, grab that and just pull it down and put your picture over, grab it again, pull it down. What I'm doing is I'm bringing the picture down. Now I could come down and change the size down here, but chances are it's gonna end up off your screen and won't be able to find it again. So it's safer to do it this way. Now when you do this pull, make sure you're pulling diagonally. Now notice up here I have kind of a diagonal on my arrow right there. You want that. Don't pull down on the side, don't pull in from this side. That's gonna uncheck constraint proportions. So make sure you pull from the corner diagonally into the picture. Very, very important. Just pull that down a bit. There we go. Let's do it a few times till we're pretty close. And that's pretty good. Okay, so now, just a bit. I want to rotate the picture. We still have our control handle, so come outside any control handle and grab that and pull it around until we can rotate the picture and get it to line up nicely with this right hand edge over here. And that's pretty good. Let's now size this in a little larger so that it's larger than the space you want to fit into. Now if you can't see where it's lining up, easy to do. Let's just go ahead and click on the green check mark. Change your opacity down to about halfway, down to about 50. You can then see the frame in behind and you can now kind of move this around to get a nice framing on that. Looks like right about there is pretty good. Okay, let's put this back up to 100. There we are. Now, just like we did with the yellow over here, I'm going to hide this layer, go over to our polygonal lasso tool, and let's make a selection around this one set right here. So I'll start over here on the left-hand side. Got a little bit of a bend right there, so do it in little steps again. Don't, don't be too impatient on any of these selections. And let's go ahead and go right across the top. Make a nice clean selection in here. 
We're doing the exact same trick on this on all of these pictures with one little addition on this one particular shot. And that's we want to keep that reflection and the shadowing on this, give it that kind of really bent effect. Okay, just going around the bottom here, just about there. And there it is. So there's our selection. Let's show our layer again. Make sure that you're still on that same layer and then click on the new layer mask button. And there it is. It drops into place. Now for this one only, I want to have those reflections. And we'll do that by changing the blend modes. Let's go back here to the move tool. And let's change the blend mode over here down to overlay. Yeah, it goes just a little bit darker as you can see, but we still have those nice nice streaks and stuff in there. And it looks like it's a piece of film this way with other stuff in behind it. So it gives us that effect of this being a curved piece with some other stuff happening in there. And I want that for this one frame only. All the rest of the frames are okay being basically flat, but this one from you want to have that stuff. So that has overlay on that. All right, let's now just move along. Next set. There we go. Same exact trick. We're going to go to the magnifying or the zoom tool. Let's zoom this up so it's pretty a pretty good fit in there, just like that. Looks good. Back to the move tool. I always make a habit of going back to the move tool here. Let's bring back up our images. And this time I'll grab this one here, little flower girl. Pull this in. There we are. And then drag the background layer onto this image. There's that and close that one down. Same trick, let's pull her down like this until we get down to the upper left hand corner. There it is. And once again, pull that down diagonally. There we go. Until we have that at about the right size. Now I'll be doing just this one. All the other images are exactly the same technique as this one here just repeat the exact same technique. So I won't be showing you all of that. We'll just skip kind of past that stuff. So here we go. There's the image. We're getting close. So I'm going to come just outside this middle control handle and I'll rotate that around. I think I'm going to match it to the left hand side this time. There we go. And that's a pretty good match. Make sure you overlap a little bit in here. And I'll bring the image down a bit more so it's just just a little wider than my space and like that let's go ahead bring our opacity down to about 50 about halfway make sure that the framing looks good you can kind of see the film frame in there looks good okay bring that back up again same thing hide that frame come back to the polygonal lasso tool let's make our selection right around this one frame in here again these aren't exactly straight lines so do this little shorter pieces and we'll just move along the top up here and then come right up against that edge straight down that one's pretty straight you can see how that's actually a pretty straight line so I'll go ahead and I'll do that in just one shot that's fine this bottom one curves a little bit so I'll have to do this in smaller jumps Make your selection like that. Show your layer again. Make sure you're on that layer and click the Add Layer Mask button. And there we go. So there's our first two pictures. Let's just bring this back up to the fit screen again. There we go. So I'll do all these three off camera here. I'll just pause the film for a second. I'll do these off camera to save some time here. But these are exactly the same technique as this one. Bring the picture in. Resize it to fit. Rotate it to line it up. Check it by bringing your opacity down to 50%. Make sure it's you know positioned properly. Put it back up to 100%. Hide that layer. Make your selection. Show the layer again and layer mask. Same technique, same steps on all of those pictures to fill all of this in. Okay, I'll pause the video right now just for a second. I'll get these three in place. We'll then come back and talk about this background. Okay, there we go. That gets all of those pictures in place. So you have all of our images. Again, this one, because this real tight curve on that, we 
did a blending mode in here to keep that kind of highlight and some of the shadowing in there. Everything else is just a straight picture just sitting on top, rotated and sized to fit. Let's now work on this background. What we need to do is we need to remove the background, but I'll do that with a layer mask. It's a little bit tricky on this. Let's come down to our background copy right here. And I'll zoom in just over here in the mid section. Now the problem here is that we have a real large range here, light to dark stuff happening. I'll be doing this using the magic wand tool right here. Normally this is set at about 32. I'll just put down to 32. There we are. Down here it says contiguous. This means touching. Make sure you have that selected. You don't want this grabbing anything else from any place else in the picture. Make sure that's selected. And click anywhere in here. And so what happens if this is set too low, it only grabs just a little bit of your image. So let's set this back to new right there. And I found that 70 works out pretty well for this particular image. Just click any old place. And at 70, it grabs everything. It's not perfect. You might get some little spots that need a little bit of touch. It looks like we're pretty good this time. So at 70, it does a good job of grabbing most of the whole image here, your lights and your darks. If we scroll down, then you'll see some problems. Right there, a little bit of a problem edge. Right in here, big problem right there. We'll fix all this stuff later on. But first, let's go up here. And I want to get all these little sprocket holes. Right there. That's pretty good. Come down here and change this to add. It should automatically switch to add. Not sure why mine didn't this time. But make sure you're on add when you click in your second section. And again, that should automatically switch over. And not sure why mine didn't. And we'll just click inside each one of the sprocket holes. Scroll to the right hand side and continue on down. There's a few little spots here. You can kind of see it right there. Kind of a little strange thing happening right there. A little strange thing happening up in here. We'll fix those once we get all the main stuff selected. So let's continue on down, clicking in all the sprocket holes. There we go. And using our slider controls here to reposition the window as needed. Now this one grabs part of that. That's fine. We'll fix that later. We'll come back to that. We'll do all of our fixing second. It's a little bit right in there. I think I need to zoom in on that. So I can actually hit that. Okay. In the middle. There we are. And we'll just put that back down to 200%, which seemed to be working for us. Okay, that's all fine. It's a little bit right there. Let me grab the magic wand. There it is. There are kind of overlapping sprocket holes in there. Okay, we're fine on the right hand side for now. And we'll do the bottom sprocket holes. Because this overlap, it's a bit trickier in here. I'll show you how you can fix that in just a bit when we go back to our, onto our, our fix stage. Okay, just continue on along, grab all of these. There we are, just go clear across the bottom. We'll then come back and clean up the major problems in here once this has been handle. I kind of missed it right there. Just undo that one. There we go. Okay, last few sprocket holes. We're still on the add, of course. There we are. Missed the bottom part of that. Okay. Let's now come into the bottom section. Any old place in here. Click on this. Now this time we have a lot of these little spots showing up. Little, little problem areas. You need to fix all of that. See, so we're looking at over here. That's okay. All right. So now we're into the fixing section. For all of these things, I'm going to change my magic wand over here to the selection brush. And I'll bring my brush size up. 39 is pretty good. And then just brush over in here. And it adds all of those to that existing selection. Be a little careful across the edge right there. 
and just kind of sweep in and clean up all those spots. Now over here, it's got a little bit of the shadow down there. I'm going to use the same tool. I'm just going to freehand this and just come right along the edge of that canister there. Just be real careful and slow about this. If your brush is too big, it's kind of hard to control, so I'll bring my brush size down. Not too far up on that one. This is just a little different here. I'm going to go back to the polygonal lasso tool and I double click inside. Unfortunately, that canceled it. Okay, back up again. There it is. Brought that back in. Back to our other tool. Let's just clean this stuff up right in there. Okay, let's check the right hand side. There's a little bit right there. We'll fix that as a second step. I'm just looking at the stuff over in here on the background texture right now and looking for any problems on the background texture. Looks like we're okay here. That looks all right. That looks okay. And that looks okay. Okay, the background texture on the top is fine. We were okay inside of all of our sprockets, so that's all good. So back, the main background area is now fixed. Let's now come down and fix some of this additional stuff in here. So, right here, you have this area here where it was selected and it shouldn't be. So back to our polygonal lasso tool, let's go over here and change this to subtract right there. And just make a big kind of a polygonal loop around this. We'll do this in a couple of steps. A loop right around what you want to get rid of on your selection. Like that cleans that out. Let's scroll down a little bit and same thing here for this this bit just come outside like that and take that out. There we go. Okay, now on this stuff here, that's so dark, I think we can leave that. That's going to be just fine. That'll look okay, so ignore that. Right hand side over here, though, is again a big problem. I want a nice clean edge in here, so I need to remove this from my selection. So, same thing. Come down here to the bottom and this just come right around the edge here of this film canister and fall up along the edge. I'll do this in a couple of steps again. And it's over here, clear around all of that. Back down to the beginning. That removes that from the selection. Let's scroll up. Same thing here, come right to the edge and Bring a nice new selection here just to go clear around all that stuff and back to the beginning again. There it is. And in this section, same thing. Just go right up along the edge. And we can get this top part at the same time. Around here and then back to the beginning again. That cleans that out. Last little bit is right there. Same trick to start over here and come out to the edge straight down and just circle around the part you want to get rid of and remove that so we've removed that from our selection okay now back to fit screen so what we've done now is we have selected the background what i want though is to select the images and the reason i did the background is it's just easier to do that than it is to select all this image stuff in here go up here to select and click on inverse and now the image is selected and the background is not selected and we can just do a layer mask. There we go. So that part is real fast and easy as you see. Now we're done to real quick stuff. Okay, there's our background. Everything else is done. I'm going to show this background. I'm going to have this available just as an example. So I don't want this as a background layer any longer. To get rid of that, just double click on the layer. It says new layer, layer zero, choose OK it renames that layer zero instead of background. I'll now take this one, drag it to the top of my whole stack and hide that. That's just for comparison. There we go. So this has become our new background layer. Now if there's no actual background layer, no layer named background, we can go to our graphics. Let this come up here. Look in the backgrounds section 
and then find a background that you like. Now there, there's, there's tons and tons of these to choose from. Let's click on one at random here. So there's just one option like that. It just puts it in as a background. If we go back here to layers, you'll see it comes in as the background layer right there. Okay, back to our graphics. There's lots of options in here depending upon the kind of mood you want. Just change the background to fit the mood. And I found one that I liked. It's, it's a little ways down here. There are some kind of marble looking like backgrounds down here. I'll scroll down to find those marble like backgrounds. And we'll use one of those. There are a few things in here, kind of Valentine's Day looking things. There's stuff in here that is, you know, real seasonal effects in here. So here's a Valentine's Day one, some nice kind of red colors in behind. That's kind of a nice one for Valentine's Day style. Okay, a bit further on down, we'll be coming down to the marbles pretty soon here. I know they're down here someplace. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. There we go. There's the marbles. There are three of these. There's marble one, which is not too bad. Marble two, a bit more texture, but it's a bit bright. And then marble three, one that I like, it's just kind of a, a gray tone marble. Okay, there's the new background. Last thing we need now is a drop shadow in here. Go back to layers, back onto that layer, and then we'll go up here to layer, layer style, style settings. Click on drop shadow, and then we'll sit in our drop shadow settings. First I like to have my lighting angle at about 130 or 135 upper left hand corner. That just works out well for me. We need to bring the size up a bit. You see there's the, the larger the size the softer the edge is. I had mine set at 13. We need to bring the distance out so I can see it. See there it is with the distance right there. There's your distance. Let me show you the size again. So the larger the size, the softer it is, just like that. So I'll put that at 13. On distance, I have mine set at 59. That seemed to work out well for this picture. And I left the opacity at the default of 35%. And then choose OK. And there we go. There is our nicely cleaned up image in here. Let's just make this a bit larger so you can see it a bit better. up on our zoom. I'm not sure the whole thing is going to fit in here, but pretty close. You can almost see the whole picture in there now. There we go. So there it is. There is that, that look. Now let's just take a look at the original. Here's why I made that one copy up here. So there's the original that I found online on the public domain file sharing site. And here's our converted version with our new images placed inside of that film strip. So there you go. That's how to put pictures inside of a film strip. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.